Welcome to Bite at a Time Books, Behind the Story, where we answer the questions you have about your favorite classic authors. What inspired your favorite author to write their novels? What was going on in the world at the time? Follow along with us as we tell you what was happening in the world while your favorite authors wrote your favorite classics. My name is Brie Carlisle, and I love to read and wanted to share my passion with listeners like you. If you enjoy our show, be sure to follow us so you get all the new episodes. We would also love for you to drop us a rating on your favorite podcast platform and share our show with your friends. You can catch us on all the social medias at Bite at a Time Books. If you would also like to hear a story by the author we are currently featuring, check out the Bite at a Time Books podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Today we'll be talking about... Lucy Maud Montgomery's Battles with Depression and the Spanish Flu Montgomery underwent several periods of depression while trying to cope with the duties of motherhood and church life, and with her husband's attacks of religious melancholia, endogenous major depressive disorder, and deteriorating health. For a woman who has given the world so much joy, life was mostly an unhappy one— in 1918, Montgomery was stricken with and was almost killed by the Spanish flu pandemic that killed between 50 to 100 million people all over the world in 1918 to 1919, spending 10 days bedridden with the Spanish flu. In her diary on December 1, 1918, Montgomery wrote after a visit to Toronto in November, Toronto was then beginning to be panic-stricken over the outbreak of the terrible Spanish flu. The drug counters were besieged with frantic people seeking remedies and safeguards. Montgomery wrote in her diary about being infected with the Spanish flu. I was in bed for 10 days. I never felt so sick or weak in my life. Going on to express thanks to God and her friends for helping her survive the ordeal. Montgomery's best friends, Frederica Campbell McFarlane, was not so lucky and died after contracting the Spanish flu on January 20, 1919. Montgomery was upset that her husband had been indifferent to her as she was dying of the Spanish flu, which drove her to think about divorce, something very difficult to obtain in Canada until 1967. Between 1873 and 1901, there were only 263 divorces out of a population of 6 million. Ultimately, Montgomery decided it was her Christian duty to make her marriage work. After the First World War, a recurring character in Montgomery's journal that was to obsess her for the rest of her life was the Piper, who at first appeared as a heroic Highlander Piper from Scotland, leading men into battle while playing traditional Highland tunes, but who turned out to be the Pied Piper of Hamelin, a trickster taking children away from their parents forever. The figure of the Piper reflected Montgomery's own disillusionment with World War I and her guilt at her ardent support for the war. To inspire men to volunteer for the war, a piper had marched through the center of Leakesdale daily for all four years of World War I, playing Highland war tunes which had given Montgomery the inspiration of the figure of the piper. The piper first appears in the Anne books in Rainbow Valley, 1919, inspiring the future-grown children of Glen Street Mary with this courage. In Rilla of Ingleside, 1921, the piper returns as a more sinister figure, inspiring Anne's son Walter to enlist in the Canadian Expeditionary Force, while taking on the appearance and personality of the Pied Piper of Hamelin. The Reverend Ewan MacDonald, a good Calvinist who believed in predestination, had become convinced that he was not one of the elect chosen by God to go to heaven, leading him to spend hours depressed and staring into space. The Reverend MacDonald often told his wife that he wished she and their children had never been born, as they were also not of the elect, and all of them were going to hell when they died as he believed that they were all predestined to be among the damned. MacDonald refused to assist with raising the children or the housework and was given over to erratic, reckless driving as if he was deliberately trying to get himself killed in a car crash, as perhaps he was. Montgomery herself was driven to depression by her husband's conduct, often writing that she wished she had married somebody else. Montgomery wrote in her diary that she could not stand looking at her husband's face when he had that horrible imbecile expression on his face as he stared blankly into space for hours. 
In February 1920, Montgomery wrote in her diary about having to deal with a letter from some pathetic 10-year-old in New York who implores me to send her my photo because she lies awake in her bed wondering what I look like. Well, if she had a picture of me in my old dress, resting with the furniture this morning, cussing the ashes and clinkers, she would die of disillusionment. However, I shall send her a reprint of my last photo in which I sat in rapt inspiration, apparently at my desk, with pen in my hand, in gown of lace and silk with hair so, amen. A quite passable woman, of no kin whatever to the dusty, ash-covered Cinderella of the furnace cellar. For much of her life, writing was her one great solace. In 1920, Montgomery wrote in her diary a quotation from the South African writer Olive Scrivener's book, The Story of an African Farm, which defined different types of love, including a love without wisdom, sweet as life, bitter as death, lasting only an hour, leading her to write, but it is worth having lived a whole life for that hour. Emphasis in the original. Montgomery concluded, My love for Herman Leard, though so incomplete, is a memory which I would not barter for anything save the lives of my children and the return of feud, Frederica Campbell McFarlane, her best friend. Montgomery believed her spells of depression and migraine headaches she suffered from were both expressions of her suppressed romantic passions and Leard's ghost haunting her. Thank you for joining Bite at a Time Books behind the story today, while we answered some of the questions you have about one of your favorite classic authors. If you enjoy our show, be sure to follow us so you get all the new episodes. If you want to see exclusive behind the scenes of our show, follow us on YouTube. We would also love for you to drop us a rating on your favorite podcast platform and share our show with your friends. You can catch us on all the social medias at Bite at a Time Books. If you would also like to hear a story by the author we are currently featuring, check out the Bite at a Time Books podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. Again, my name is Bree Carlisle, and I hope you come back next time when we answer more questions about one of your favorite classic authors.